Well, I think uh, anytime you win your first ever Eastern Conference Championship and then you're able to uh, go on and, and end up in the fifth game of the finals, uh, you, you're continually thinking back to that. It was a wonderful time for our team. It was a great time for our fans. Um, but I think we're at a point now where, you know, it's a fond memory, and now we're focused on 2010. You know, how do we get better? How do we repeat as Eastern Conference champions? How do we go back to the finals um, and this time win a championship? And I think, you know, the, everybody's going to be better. Uh, with Sacramento uh, contracting and those players going to other teams, um, it's going to create an even more parity in the league. So we're really focusing on the draft. We're focusing on free agents. Uh, we're focusing on keeping our core group together. Um, I think we had a great uh, uh, group of players, a good chemistry on and off the court. Uh, so we want to make sure we keep this group together and maybe tweak it just a little bit and get just a little bit better. I think we need to improve our field goal shooting percentage. I thought one of the things that uh, that we did good at times was sh we shot really well from the three-point line. But I think consistently all of our perimeter players and our four player, you know, we're not asking our center to shoot threes, but we're asking our one, two, three, and four players uh, to be very good three-point shooters. And, and I think that's an area that we can improve on. And I think if we do uh, across the board a couple of percentage points, um, it, you know, we can win four or five more games. You know, I'm a huge Brienne January fan. I thought we got the steal of the draft when we were able to get her with the sixth pick. Um, she just did a super job for us off the bench, played quality minutes, and not only did she play the point for us, she played the uh, the two guard. And so there were times when we had Tully and Bree in there together. And I think that her versatility, the fact that she is a combo guard, makes her even more valuable. Uh, we're excited about the fact that she's over in Turkey now, playing really well. I think she maybe had 24 points and a gob of assists the other night and getting some more experiences over there. I think as she continues to grow our game, um, it's, you know, it's just only going to help our team. You know, she's a push guard. She's an attacking guard. She can get to the rim. She can, you know, draw and kick. And, and then I think she's got to continue to work on her three-point shot. What does that affect? Well, I think it was tough and also a surprise. Anytime you've got a, a team that's won as many championships as they had the you know, the tradition they had developed there, it was it was kind of a stunner. But I think we all know that everyone in all walks of life is dealing with tough economic times. Uh, I think we were just fortunate that a, um, an owner's group in Tulsa was willing to purchase them, and now that team has moved to, to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I think that, te uh, that team and that city um, are really going to rally around um, uh, the WNBA franchise being there. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it, it changes the East, it changes the dynamics in the East, and they were a great rivalry of ours. And now we've got to uh, refocus here, and you know, and is, is our great, is our number one rivalry going to be Connecticut? Is it going to be Washington? Is it going to be Atlanta? I'm not sure. Well, there's mixed uh, mixed feelings about this draft. Some people think it's, you know, there's three really great players in the draft, and it really drops off. Um, I think for us, having the 11th pick, uh, you know, we've got to do our homework. We've got to really research some of these players and see if we can't find a sleeper at that 11th spot. Um, we sure got a great pick last year with the sixth pick, so we're, we're exploring all of our options, even the possibility of trading the 11th pick. Um, you talking about that pick. Is it a little bit different this year? Does it feel different where we don't have a specific need? And do you draft best athlete or do you draft a specific position? Well, I think one of the areas that we need to focus on is the fact that this is Tully's last year in the WNBA. And so a year from now, Brianne, of course, will be our starting point guard. But who is Brianne's backup? So we have to evaluate, do we need another perimeter player that could slide over and play the point. That's got to be something in the back of our mind based on Tully's age and where she is in her career. Um, I think we're always looking for a, a great um, a young post player. I think everyone is. And when you look at, at uh, some, uh, Tammy and where she is in her career, you know, if we could find a young center to develop for the future, that might be something that we would look at. But then again, you always, when, when you get ready to draft, you know, you're always thinking about who is the best player, regardless of position, available. So all of those three things will probably come into play uh, as we approach that pick. 
I don't travel to games um, in the uh, fall, you know, in October, I mean, in November, December. Um, I mostly watch the, the pre-conference games on television. And then through the month of January, I continue to watch sometimes eight games a day on TV. And then we use those televised games to kind of narrow down who we really want to go see in person. You know, who do we want to go see up close, to, uh, talk to the coach, uh, you know, watch them practice. Um, and so we're in the process now of really narrowing our list down and getting out more um, to see them in person. Of course, we'll cover uh, extensively the conference tournaments. Um, and I think it's fair to say that we've got our top, I don't know, 15, 18. Um, and, and we're really focusing in on the players that we think, the box that we think of players that will be available at 11. Well, um, I took a break immediately after the season. We did exit interviews, and then I went to Florida, um, South Florida, for about a week just to rest. Um, I think uh, I think everyone knew, but you know, I was really struggling with the flu by the end of the season, and so I, I don't even really remember the week in Florida because I was so exhausted, um, you know, from the season, but also from from fighting that. Um, what I would like to do is is have one more time to go to Florida before the season starts where I could really enjoy it. But I spend a lot of time at home with my family. Um, you know, this is the time of the year when I'm able to uh, join my bridge club and we play bridge and uh, spades and all types of cards. So that that's kind of a relaxing thing for me. And then I love to read. Um, but there's so many games on TV now. I can, I can find um, a game every night. Um, uh, on the, with the with the satellite, and then on you know Saturdays and Sundays, that's that's when I can find eight to ten games. So uh, even though I'm not in Indianapolis, but but about a one week out of each month, um, I'm still uh, from Tennessee uh, watching basketball games, and I'm also reevaluating our season. One of the things that I'm doing is working on our on our playbook and our system, and tweaking it and deciding you know what we want to keep, what we want to add. Um, so there's still a lot to do, and I can do it from, from um, Dresden, Tennessee. I'm trying to get us away from basketball, so I'll try one more time. Okay. What, what, what's, what's, what's your latest, greatest fried food recipe? Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Well, you know, I've been experimenting some with my fried green tomatoes, um, fried okra. Uh, you know, in Tennessee, we fry everything. Um, so... Um, I don't know that I have a specialty. I've been toying with the idea of frying some sweet potatoes because I saw it on the Paula Dean cooking show. And by the way, that is, I watch the Food Network. When, you know, when I'm not watching basketball, I'm watching that Food Network for recipes. I, I really enjoy, um, uh, you know, the Iron Chef competition, the Chopped. Um, what's really neat about that channel is now they've somehow taken food and turned it into competition. So I really get a kick out of that. But uh, I'm always trying some kind of new recipe, in particular if it's fried. Um, well, you know, it's a, it's a tremendous honor. And, you know, I think any time you're inducted into a Hall of Fame, um, that's all sports you, you know that makes it unique you know this is men and women from every every sport there is that have had outstanding careers and somehow they're tied to the state of Tennessee either they grew up there or they participated uh, or coached at a high school or college in that state and when you look at the 40 50 years of that Hall of Fame and the people that are in that Hall of Fame I mean it's so overwhelming uh, I mean, I, I'm looking back, and there's Wilma Rudolph's name, and Nira White, and Pat Summit, and you know, I'm not even going to go on the on, on the on the male side. Just the tremendous women that have been honored. So, I, you know, it, it, it's it's really special to me, um, and, and it's going to be even more special because all of my family um, will be able to come to Nashville for that event. So, and a lot of my friends, you know, from all over the country are coming back for it. So, I, it's it's going to be a really neat night. Now, on top of that fans in Indiana on April 24 <laughs> are going to be able to partake because, Lynn, you've been selected to not one but two Hall of Fames in within six months. Right, I don't know what's going on. It makes me think I'm, I'm getting, uh, either I'm near death or I'm, I'm awfully old because that usually doesn't happen in that short of a span. But I, again, um, the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame, you got to be kidding me. I mean, that's a tremendous honor. Um, you know, basketball in Indiana is, is like a religion, you know, so... Um, it's special. A lot of my former players will be able to come back. Um, 
Uh, I know a lot of my former Purdue players, some of my assistants that work for me uh, through the years are coming. Um, some of my family will be able to come up. And, of course, one of my former players who's now the coach at Purdue is also being um, honored at, at, at that Hall of Fame banquet. So I hope all of our Fever fans um, uh, here in Indianapolis uh, will either go on our website or the, uh, or the Indiana Hall of Fame website and see about tickets. We'd love to have a huge turnout of, uh, of Fever people at the, at the Hall of Fame induction.